Hi, I'm Lee. I'm a New Zealander living in the East Riding of Yorkshire, and this is my podcast about my handmade life. You can find me on Instagram as Luli underscore, and on Ravelry as Luli. I sell knitting bags at Shop Luli. And, but you can find links to all of my online places at luli.com. It's Sunday morning and it's really nice to be sat down and talking to you. I've had a little bit of a cold this week and so I've been feeling quite lethargic. Um, but so it's nice to have a little bit more energy today. And it was really sunny outside this morning. It's starting to cloud over now. So I hope it doesn't rain later. It's been raining quite a lot here. And I'm kind of, my plan for the day today is to sit in the back garden and do some knitting and sewing and some gardening as the day progresses so really easy going um, but I was really excited to come and have a little chat with you first I have been casting on all of the things um, and so I'm not going to show you all of the things you know I like the uh, anticipation um, but I thought I would just show you a couple of the things that I've been uh, working on this week the main ones, yeah. So the first thing that I had to talk about is community news. Because after my confession last week, uh, you guys um, popped over to the Ravelry group and had a great idea about something that you would like to do for the Stash Appreciation Society. Um, and so we kind of agreed that we would have an oldest along. And so for this um, knit along, crochet along, craft along, you can um, you can use your oldest stash or the oldest pattern, unknitted pattern that you have in your library or queue, what's the other thing, or your oldest whip, you could pick that up again um, and we'll have a knit along together. So I have decided to, I've decided to discontinue the summit challenge because no one seemed to be particularly enthusiastic about that. Um, and I'll set up a finished object thread for the oldest along. I thought though that we could still chatter in the Stash Appreciation Society chatter thread. So let me know what you think of that idea or if you'd like a separate chatter thread for the um, oldest along. Um, and I hope you'll come and join in with us. I'm actually really excited about it. Um, I decided to have a look and see what my oldest stash was and as I was scrolling down in Ravelry as you do because I didn't think to sort it from oldest to newest or anything like that <laughs> I was sort of I was feeling a bit of trepidation actually I'm sort of like what if I don't want to knit with my oldest stash I'm sort of like if I don't want to knit with my oldest stash perhaps I should rehome it to somebody that loves it so anyway I was scrolling down and um, my oldest stash turned out to be this, which I love. This is a skein of yarn that I got years and years ago. Um, indie dyeing was quite new to me and I had found this indie dyer in Europe that I just loved. I thought they were just, their work was just marvellous. And so I think it was the first time I had mail ordered yarn from an indie dyer. And so I sent off for about three skeins. And this was one of them. And I knitted the other two and saved this because I already had a pair of orange socks. And so I thought I would save this until I fancied a new pair of orange socks. And then, this particular dye got really, really popular. <laughs> um, it's actually Woolmise, one of their early colourways, and it's the Son colourway. Um, and because I had a pair of orange socks, I actually thought that I would de-stash this. And there was such a flurry. It was, it was difficult to get Woolmise at that time. And there was such a flurry. People started to get quite nasty with each other. Um, 
and I think at one point I was offered $70 for it, which I wasn't comfortable with because the dyer in question uh, was still selling her skeins of yarn at a very reasonable price and I felt really uncomfortable because people were buying the yarn specifically to sell it on at a profit, uh, which I thought was really rubbish. But anyway, the upshot was that I didn't, um, I didn't de-stash it because I just felt that the conversation that was being had was a bit nasty, actually. You know, it's just yarn. But in my mind, ever since, this has been a $70 skein of yarn. <laughs> so it's precious. And I thought I had to knit something really special with it. But my intention always was to knit socks. And so for the oldest along, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Because at the moment, I don't have a pair of orange socks. And better still, I have another skein of wool mice. So I'm going to make blorange socks, which is my favourite. Um, so I'm really excited to do that. And thank you very much for the inspiration to sort of go through and actually use my oldest stash. I'm, yeah, I'm really excited to start these. So that will be lots of fun. And I hope you'll come over to the Stash Appreciation Society and, um, and join the oldest along with us. Come and show us what your oldest whips are and what your oldest stash are. Or even a pattern that you've had in your library for ages and ages that you really love and you still really love and you're wanting to knit. I thought we could run this until October. Um, yeah, so that gives us a bit over three months because you might have, you know, because often people stall on things like cardigans and, and large projects. Um, I am going to say no blankets and because they're sort of just scrappy on growing projects that can go on forever. So if it's a scrappy blanket, if it's a blanket that you bought all the yarn for in one go and you've been working on, then I think that would be okay. But yeah, scrappy blankets made up of loads of minis don't, don't count for the purposes of this cow. Um, and I think what I'm going to do for the prize is to make it a one of my Christmas bags. Um, and so if you put your finished objects in the oldest along thread, you could win one of my, um, Shop Bluely Christmas knitting bags. So that will be dead exciting. I'm so excited just to get this yarn out and actually just use it for the thing that I intended to use it for in the first place. So, lots of fun. Blorange socks. The other thing that I have that I've been meaning to try, and I thought I would try for this project, are um, these um, sock circular needles. You can't actually see them that well in the package. Um, if you've been watching for a while, you know that I tried out the short circular needles last year and actually found that they made my repetitive strain injuries flare up again. Um, so I wasn't a big fan of them, but a while ago Emma from Elden Wood Craft, I hope I've got that right, was talking about um, the short circulars. I think these are 9 inch, 25 centimetres. I'm a metric person, so yeah, 25 cent centimetres. Um, she was talking about the asymmetrical needles and said that for her they had been a bit of a game changer. And so I thought I would try them out to see if they worked for me as well. So, yeah, I'm going to try that out with for the oldest along. This week, I've also been casting on all of the things. Well, for me, all of the things, lots of things. I usually only have one or two projects going on at the moment. One or two knitting projects. I've got all sorts of other projects lying about the house. But, um, yeah, and so... I have some um, yarn in my stash that I suppose I've had it for a bit over a year so it's not deep stash but it's such a pretty colour that I really I really want it in my wardrobe and so the conversation about the oldest along also made me think that I should just get this out and get started with it. So I did and I'm halfway through a row but there's not much to see at the moment. 
It's a beautiful colour. I was actually gifted this yarn when I um, worked down at our local yarn shop and it's just stunning. It's like a it's like an orange that has been over dyed with navy or green or something like that to make this beautiful sort of deep brownie reddy colour. Sort of a wine wine colour. It is um, Malabrigo Sock, so it's 100% Merino, I think. Yeah, Merino. And the colour is um, Mate. I think that's how you say it. I have no idea how you say it, I'm just guessing. So, yes. I've had socks in this yarn, and they were probably, they were so soft and lovely, they were probably my favourite socks of all time. They were my comfort socks. Um, but it came to the point where they were more repair than socks and so they have gone on the compost heap to live another life there. Um, but I'm really excited to be um, knitting this up. Part of the reason that I hadn't cast it on before is because I was dithering over the pattern. I want um, I wanted something quite classic that I would wear a lot um, just because I love the colour so much of this. But what I chose in the end, I had thought about doing a custom fit to the jumper. Um, but what I chose in the end was actually, um, actually the, the printing on this is Hohi Locatelli's Granito jumper. Um, which is sort of more of a modern style. And I think, I think I'm going for comfort over over style really. I'm not sure that this over oversized look is going to look that great on me. I think the jury's still out on that one about how I feel about it. Um, but I thought what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit until you join at the armpits and then maybe just put it on and see how I feel about it. I quite like these um, lines down the front. She's got a little um, pattern in there. You probably can't see them that well there. But there are some lines that run down the front that actually follow the contours of your body. And so um, I thought that might that might work a little bit better than some of the other sort of large patterns. The other thing is that this is not massively oversized, or at least I've not chosen a size that is hugely oversized. So I'm not sure I'm going to put the pockets on it either. I'm not sure if that will work for me. Anyway, but um, whilst I have been stuffed up it has been a really easy knit I'm thinking of this as being like a giant vanilla sock you know something that I can just switch my brain off and go round and around and around so yeah um I didn't get the exact gauge for the pattern I liked the fabric at a little bit tighter gauge and so I have just gone up a few sizes um and I'm following those directions so the last thing that I have really put a dent in this week is my quilt uh, so this is the Jelly Roll Race quilt number two uh, with the squares in it. You have seen the top before, I think. But I have actually um, managed to get it quilted, which was interesting. Actually, stand by. <laughs> Hi! So... The um, wadding or batting that I used for this is made out of recycled milk, uh, recycled plastic bottles. Um, and it feels a lot like polar fleece, except it's a little bit looser. Um, but this has come out very different from the first, um, uh, it was a wool pure wool machine washable wadding that I used in the first quilt. It's much more dense and the quilt is actually, it feels a lot heavier as a result from the first one. Um, I think when you get the, the wool bashing, it's very airy and light. Um, and so the first quilt that I made was just so soft and light and beautiful whereas this is a lot more dense and it is actually a big bigger quilt as well um, but I think the wadding just has that bit more weight 
to it. I'm not convinced it would be warmer because wool is so much more insulative than plastic bottles. <laughs> um, but as I said last time, I'm mainly using this so that I can machine wash it easily and, um, you know, it's going to be a heavy wear item. But I just thought that that was really interesting. If I was making a quilt um, to be a little bit more luxurious and um, and not, um, not just hard wearing, then I would definitely use the wool batting again. Or I would really like to, I'd like to feel a cotton batting just to see what that's like as well. Um, yeah, to see if that has the same lightness that the wool batting has. Um, so I have to mail order my wadding and wadding slash batting, depending on which country you live in. Um, and so I don't really have the opportunity just to have a handle of some. However, I do know a couple of quilters, so perhaps I should ask them if they have a little square of, um, of cotton batting in their stash that I can fondle. So, since you saw this last, I have um, I have actually put my quilt sandwich together and done all the quilting on it, which was epic. It just goes, doing the quilting just goes on and on and on and you use up so much thread. Oh my word. Um, but, so I used a linen on the back and that has also contributed to the to the weight of the quilt because linen, this fabric, is quite a bit heavier than the, well it's not hugely heavy, but it is heavier than the cotton on the front. Um, and so it's not a drapey, snuggly thing. Um, but that's okay, it's just for going over our couch for the dogs to adopt. And they've already tried to adopt it, so there you go. I was a bit more thoughtful about the back this time, actually. When I quilted the front, I just used an off-white thread um, because there's lots of colours on here and that sort of blends in the best. Um, as you can see, I've got the binding there ready to... It just needs to be hand-stitched down. That's what I'm planning to do in the garden today. And garden a bit. Um, yeah, and then on the back, I have I had been gifted by Lorraine Pugh, who has who is a really lovely crochet designer, if you haven't come across her, and she does a podcast as well. Um, I was gifted this um, variegated cotton, and it's kind of oranges and yellows, and it has the odd little grey section um, in it. And so I used that on the back, and I really love the way this has come out. I love the crinkliness of the linen, and I really like the variegated thread. I think I almost like the back more than the front now. Um, it is going to be hard wearing, um, which pleases me because it needs to be. I don't want to make another one immediately. So, yeah, so I'm really pleased um, with that, and I'm so chuffed that I had the the orange cotton. I'm not sure, can I show it to you in a way that you can actually see that very well? Let me push. I'm so pleased that I had that thread in my stash to use um, because it just looks really good there. So yeah, last night I cut out all of the binding and um, sewed that round the edge. And so I am going to get out, make myself another coffee and go and sit in the garden and sew that down. So I think there's about six and a half metres of, no, not six and a half, almost six metres to sew down. But, you know, you just do it in sections. And I had hoped that I would have this done for when the hairy man comes home. So that I could surprise him by having um, replaced the ugly fleece blanket that we have. But he has, um, they have decided to send him home tomorrow. So I'm not going to do six metres of hand stitching by then. But yeah, I'm so pleased with this. I really like the colours. It's got threads all over it. Um, and I'm looking forward to having this on our couch. Yeah. 
Thank you so much for joining me this morning. It's always a pleasure to come and chat with you and I really enjoy it when you pop over to the Ravelry group and join in and introduce yourself. That's lots of fun. It's nice to know who's watching um, and to make some new friends. So if this is your first time watching, I hope you enjoyed the podcast and you can always subscribe if you want to come back next week. Um, and yes, as I say, I hope that we'll see you in the Ravelry group. Cheerio! Thank you.